Hello guys, so here we are to do our math lesson. This time we are doing a brand new concept. We've seen a little bit of this with our Saxon worksheets where we have divided some shapes and we've colored some shapes and we've done like, we would color one half of a shape blue when we've done kind of those things, but we're gonna really dig into fractions. And so I um, hope that you have watched the, the book on the, the cow and the fraction and all of that thing, because it's a super fun book. I have it at school and I wanted to read it to you, but haven't made it up there to go get it. So um, the second best option was for you to see it on YouTube. But um, so you saw the holy cow, but um, what we're going to do today is we're going to actually play with fractions and we're going to use fractions and we're going to learn how to actually work with fractions. So what I'm going to do, you're going to push pause in just a second when I say go, and you are going to look for a couple of items. Okay. You need to have either a pencil or a pen or a marker. It does not matter what kind. It can be a colored pencil, whatever you need. So that's a first thing is a writing utensil. The second thing is a piece of paper. It can be anything. I have manila paper here. Okay. So a piece of paper, a writing utensil, and then you are going to look for a circular object. Anything that is a circle that you can trace. I have a bowl. Okay. Don't look at it. It might be dirty, but um, it is a bowl that I can trace that will fit on my paper. Okay. Just like, like that. Okay. I had a plate picked out and I noticed that when I put my plate on top of my paper, it was too big and I couldn't trace around the paper or around the, the plate because it was too big. So when I, when I say go, you push pause and you go around your house, kind of like a little scavenger hunt and you go find those three items, something to write with a piece of paper and a, um, a, a, a circle item a bowl, a plate, a cup, something, but make it a little bit big so that we can play with it and cut it out and all that good stuff. So, oh, oh, when I said cut it out, if you have a pair of scissors, find a pair of scissors as well. If you don't, that's okay. So three for sure ob objects, one optional object, which is a pair of scissors. So, and go. Okay. So hopefully you have, <coughs> excuse me, all four, well, definitely all three, if not all four of those, I have my trusty pair of scissors here. Okay, you're all ready to go? Okay, so your first task is to lay your piece of paper down on the counter, and you're going to lay your object onto your paper in the middle, and you're going to trace it. I told y'all, oh, here it is. Here's my marker. I'm gonna do a different marker. I'm gonna see, can y'all see that? Here we are. And I'm going to trace all the way around it. And so y'all do that now. If I'm going to go too fast and I'm moving on to my next step, then y'all just push pause until you're ready. And so see, I have my beautiful circle right here. Okay. So again, if I went too fast, then you just push pause. But now what I'm going to do is we're talking about fractions. What you have just created is a whole circle one whole. I'm going to put a big old one there because that is one whole thing. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into equal parts. That is the most important thing. And what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to pick this up and put it up here on my board so that you can actually see it. The most important thing about fractions is that they are equal parts. And what happens a lot of times is that people don't always do it in equal parts. They might separate it here and they would make a huge piece here and a small piece here. The most important thing about fractions is that they are equal parts. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you separate it the best that you can right down the middle. Okay. Right down the middle. And what you just created was how many parts, how many pieces that was two, right? two pieces. And so because we split it, we draw what's called the fraction bar. So draw a fraction bar off to the side. And here's how we're going to think about it from now on. We're going to do P and W. The P on the top stands for the part that we're talking about. When we're talking about a fraction, we're talking about just a piece, not the whole thing, because the whole thing is one. So I'm talking about just a part, just a piece of it. Now, the whole thing goes at the bottom. How many parts make up the whole thing? One, two. 
there are two that make up the whole thing, okay? This number tells me in the whole thing, there are two parts. Does that make sense? Now, if I were to color this side green, I'm coloring just part of it. And that's what my P stands for, just part of it, okay? And I'm just coloring one out of the two. So I would put the one right there, okay? And so the way that we read this, if this was colored, all one color, the way we would read that is we could say one half. Say that again, one half. Or we can say one out of two. That line can say out of, one out of two, okay? If I colored both parts, what would that look like? Again, it's split, so I need my fraction bar. How many parts would be colored if I colored both of them? It would be two parts. And then, how many parts are there? There are two parts. Remember, the parts and the whole. How many parts are there all together? There's two. How many parts are colored? Two. That would mean that I color the whole thing, which is one. Okay? Well, go get one. Okay, so this was talking about halves. When we color just one of them, it is one half, okay? Now, I want you to take it and like, this looks like a clock actually, so we went from like 12 o'clock to six o'clock. Now, I want you to do it from nine o'clock to three o'clock and split it right here, okay? Now, how many parts, if I'm making another fraction bar, we put our P and our W, how many, how many did we make? How many sections did we make now in the whole thing? The whole thing? We now have one, two, three, four. We now have four in the whole thing. But now what if I color just this section here? How many parts are colored? Just one. So the way we read this is one fourth. Say fourth. One fourth. Okay. What if I colored both of these? I'm going to put my fraction bar because I know we're cutting it in pieces. It's not the whole thing. It's not one whole. It's pieces. So I'm cutting it in pieces. I know my parts that are colored is on the top, but on the bottom, that's called the denominator down denominator, the bottom is going to have my all my pieces all together. How many pieces are in the whole thing? Four. But how many parts are colored? There are two parts colored. So that is two-fourths. What also does that look like? It looks like half of it is colored. So it's actually two-fourths and one-half. Both of those would be the right answer. And we'll get into that later, okay? What if I colored this one also? What fraction would that be? So again, if we're talking about fractions, I need my fraction bar. My numerator, say numerator. That's a big word, and actually you don't even need that in first grade. I'm just making you go into third grade right now, so click over to your third grade brain. Numerator is your north number, your top number. So in your numerator, it is actually your parts. How many parts are colored? There are three parts colored. And then the denominator, the down number, the bottom number, is how many are the in the whole thing? How many parts are in the whole thing? There are still four parts in the whole thing. So the way I read this fraction is three-fourths. That tells me there are three out of four colored. Three fourths, three out of four. Okay, does that make sense? And so this is kind of how we're going to talk about fractions from here on. So let me go through over here, and I want you to tell me, say the words out loud, what the fractions are. Ready? One whole, two out of two, or two halves. When you see a two, it is halves. This is one half. This is one-fourth, because we cut these into fourths. 
We cut them into four, so they are fourths. This is two out of four or two fourths. This one is three out of four or three fourths. Okay, does that one make sense? Now, as a little bonus, what you can do is you can cut out this circle and um, and uh, cut out the fourths and kind of play with those. Then, what you can also do if you want, and here's a little bit of a fun thing, when you're cutting them out, you can then cut these this way. Cut each one of these in half. And then how many do you think that would make you? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in first grade, we don't have to know eighths, but I bet you can. And you do the same concept. You do the same thing. So we do the fraction bar. How many is in the whole thing? Eight. And then let's say we want to have just one slice of pizza then what we want is one part out of the whole thing one eighth eighth so we have one eighth okay so here's what your task is today so again you can do this as a bonus you can color the i mean so you can cut these out and you can um make them be a whole thing you can kind of play with these pizza pieces the other thing that you can do is make them be um, squares or rectangles. Okay, so if I made it a rectangle, remember what I said about fractions. The most important thing is that they are equal parts. So I can, right now, that is one half. I split these into halves. Now, I split them into fourths. And if I split this top one like this, I must split the bottom one like this. And what I just did was eighths, okay? And we can look further into this. Today was just kind of an introduction to it. And so what we're gonna do now is this sheet here, we're gonna do this one all together. You do not have this printout. I am going to keep this up right now. We're going to do two of these together and then you're going to do the rest of them on your paper. It can be on the back of this one. It can be on the back of your chart. It can be on a new piece of paper. It can be on a scratch piece of paper, okay? So if you'll notice, these guys look a lot different than this guy, right? But we're gonna use the same skills, the same concepts to make these guys work. We're gonna circle the fraction that shows what part is shaded. So the first thing, let me look at these little silly fish. Which one is shaded? Just this one guy, right? So remember, when I make my fraction, the part that's special, the part that's different goes on the top, and then all of them, the whole thing all together goes on the bottom. How many are there all together? There are three. How many parts are crazy? How many parts are weird? How many parts are they asking about? There's just one there. So that is one out of three. And the way we say that is one third. One third. And that looks like that one. Okay, does that make sense? Let's look at this one right here. Let's look at the whales. Okay, how many, so it's asking about which fraction, which part, so I'm gonna need my fraction bar. Now, how many are there all together? One, two, three, four. I'm gonna put that one at the bottom because it's asking about all of them together. And then the top part is my part that's special. One, two, three. Okay, and there we have three out of four are shaded. That's how we can say it. Three out of four are shaded. That means three fourths are shaded. So which one matches that? That one is one fourth. That one actually is four over one, which is four holes. And this one is three fourths. So that's the answer there. Okay, now, what I want you to do on your paper is I want you to put number one and it's going to be this one right here. This one right here is going to be number two. So number one, you can see, 
These are squid. No, octopus. Okay. I'm going to give you a hint. And there's your hint. Part over whole. How many are there all together? That's going to go down here for your whole. And then how many parts are shaded? And that's going to go at the top. And you're going to write that down. Okay. And then number two. Here is your fraction bar, your part, and your whole. How many are all there together? And you're going to put that one on the bottom. And then how many parts are shaded? How many parts are special? And that one's going to go at the top. Okay? Now, look at these guys on the bottom. They're asking that in kind of a different way. This one's giving you the answer. They're telling you, hey, look, there's four in all. How many parts are shaded? Well, just one. One fourth. You're creating that fraction. This one is telling you the answer. There are three in here. How many is shaded? Just one. Now, you're going to put number three here and number four here. Your paper should just have one, two, three, and four. You don't have to draw the picture. All I'm looking for is a fraction, a fraction, a fraction, and a fraction. So you're going to write the fraction. They already gave you that the denominator or the, the whole is three. You're going to tell me what is in the numerator, what is in the top. And then on number four, they're telling you there are four altogether, but how many are shaded? You're going to put that number in the numerator. Okay? If you need to push pause at any point, go ahead and do that. But those are your problems that you can write down today. One, two, three, and four. And that's what Ms. Remini and I are going to check, that you have those answers for today's math assignment for Monday. Okay? If you have any questions, let us know, and we will do a Zoom tutorial to help you out with the... Um, with the idea of fractions, but you're going to be practicing the fractions all week long. Okay, so good luck, and let us know if you have any questions at all. Okay, bye-bye.